The orca can be seen as our oceanic counterpart. These highly emotional and sensitive animals have developed an intricate social intelligence with the complex communication being part of that. Being able to communicate is the core of social awareness, so let's take a closer look at the language of the orca. One thing that most, if not all, social and emotional beings have in common is a large and complex brain. In the animal kingdom, orcas have the second largest brain after sperm whales. But the size is not necessarily what makes the orcas so smart. Their brain rather has special characteristics in which they excel and differ from us and other intelligent animals. Orcas have the most gyrified brain in the world. Gyrification describes the amount of wrinkling and folding in the brain's cortex, which ultimately increases the amount of total cortical nerve tissue and therefore increases the speed and the amount of data processing in the brain. That means that highly gyrified brains like the orca's brain are able to process more data faster. There are also two other brain parts that are highly developed in the orca's brain. A set of brain lobes called paralimbic system which is related to spatial memory and navigation and the amygdala which is associated with emotional learning and long-term memories. Yet the most fascinating part of the orca's brain that amazes scientists is the insular cortex. An orca's insular cortex is the most elaborated in the world. The insula is involved in consciousness and playing diverse functions linked to emotions that include compassion, empathy, perception, motor control, self-awareness and interpersonal experiences, leading to long-time complex emotions and a very powerful empathy towards other members of the pod. Next to other things, the orca uses all that brain power to communicate in an intricate way. The orca's language is learned and inherited from generation to generation. Just like humans, baby orcas can hear their mother's voice while they are in the womb and therefore get in touch with the language before they are even born. After birth, they have a very limited set of vocalizations but rapidly learn the language from other members of the pod. The most fascinating thing is that the communication between orcas is so intricate that every orca pod basically has their own dialect of vocalizations. That means that orcas living off the coast of Norway have a different dialect than orcas living in Canada or Argentina. Among different pods, similar vocalizations can exist, but they are not two different pods with the same repertoire of sounds. It was believed that everything sounded the same, but scientists have carefully studied the characteristics of each of these sounds like duration, volume, frequency and moments in which they use them and found distinct differences. As an example, the sounds of a pot in Norwegian waters were compared with those from a pot living in waters close to Iceland, which is not far away from each other. The resident orcas of Iceland had 24 different sounds, while those from Norway had only 23. However, what is more surprising is the fact that not a single sound was repeated in both groups and all were unique to each pot. Orcas mainly make three different types of vocalizations – clicks, whistles and pulsed calls. The clicks are part of the whale's sonar and are used for echolocation. They use it to find and locate food sources for defining other objects in the ocean and locating the whale in its environment. Echolocation is the ability of organisms to locate and identify objects through projecting high-frequency sound waves and listening for echoes or reflected sound. This is especially helpful in dark and unclear waters. Orcas use their phonic lips, a structure located in the nasal passage, to produce directional clicks of a wide range of frequencies. 
In front of the nasal sacs is the so-called melon. This type of organ acts as an acoustical lens to focus the sound waves. The waves are then projected forward into the water in front of the whale. The sound waves will bounce back from surrounding things and are received by the lower jaw. The received sound image is then transferred to the middle ear and inner ear, where it is lastly sent to the brain through the auditory nerve to be processed and formed into an acoustic image. Another form of vocalization is the pulsed call, which can be received by ear and presents the main component of the orca communication repertoire. They use these very discrete calls to communicate within the pot and keep track of each other in dark waters. Although most orca calls in the wild consist of a very limited vocabulary of about 40 sounds or less used by each whale, scientists who have analyzed the nature of these calls say that they are very dense and rich. Also, there are tremendous variations in intensity, volume and tone, as well as emotional content. Though it has not been demonstrated yet, there is certainly potential for communication of complex and specific information in these calls. Lastly, orcas use whistles, which also are employed in the pod communication. Whistles are typically continuous tone emissions that may last for many seconds. However, no matter how distinct and intricate the communication between orcas is, scientists still have not been able to understand it completely, although language is one of our greatest evolutionary advantages. Maybe the root of the problem is that we always try to use an anthropocentric way of observing. Carl Sagan, astronomer and cosmologist, once mentioned, and you might have heard the quote before, it is not of interest to note that while some dolphins are reported to have learned English, up to 50 words used in correct context, no human being has ever been reported to have learned Dolphinese. And to add to that, I would like to leave you with a quote from Laurie Marino from the Whale Sanctuary Project. She's a neuroscientist and expert in animal behavior and intelligence. Recognizing intelligence and self-awareness in other animals is difficult because we are limited by what we can understand and experience. I really hope you liked the video and learned something about this beautiful animal. If you did, please leave a like to show us that you enjoyed the content. Subscribe for more videos like this and everything nature and wildlife. But most importantly, have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day.